It says this. Everyone who is called by my name, this is God speaking, whom I created for my glory. This is every one of us, our purposes. God created us for his glory. Now what that means is God made you so that you could worship him, so that you could make him look good, so that you can make his name known to your friends and your family and people in your community, so that you would obey him and just make God look great. That's why you were created. So, if you are living for God's glory, if you are living for Jesus' glory, you are living a fulfilled life. And if you are living not for God's glory, you are living a wasted life. This is according to God. Mamana, thank you so much for being honest with me about living for fun. And I think, honestly, even though most of us don't have the guts to say it, I think that's what most of us are living for. Because we're by nature, because we're sinners, we're self-centered. I am me. I live for my wife and my kids and my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my PlayStation, my computer, my space, my Facebook, my job. Me, 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 me. But according to God, that's not why he created us. That is a wasted life. So, when you're confronted with this, when God says, I made you for this, and you say, I'm doing this, you have two options. One is to directly disobey God, to say, I am not going to follow God. And if you claim to be a Christian, but you directly disobey him and you have no intention of following him, that means you fall just like I was. You would be a hypocrite. And the Bible says that on the day of judgment in Matthew chapter 7, it says many are going to come to Jesus and they're going to say, Lord, Lord. But Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You who practice lawlessness. What that means is you who practice sin. You make a constant practice of sin. So although we can fool our friends by, you know, your attendance to youth group, you might even read your Bible once in a while, watch some Christian movies, say no to drugs, you may think, fool your family, I sure did. My mom and dad had no idea. But you are not going to fool God. God knows what you're living for. God knows what you desire. God knows if you truly live for him and his glory or for you and your passions and what you want. Remember, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. The next verse of that says, so glorify God in your body. So make God known in your body. What that means is use everything that you have to glorify God. I thank Mark so much for playing uh, Hell Song United a, a second ago. I, I, when I walked in, I seen every a couple guys playing guitars. You have a talent. You have a desire. Now it's up to you what you're going to do with that. You can take your music so that you can create a band so everyone will know your name, so you'll be popular. Or you can take that talent and ability and use it to make God known, to make God look good. To use it not just for yourself, but maybe you'll worship in church. Maybe you'll, the, your church needs someone to play the guitar or the drums, and you can step in. Maybe instead of singing songs about how awesome you are, you can sing songs about how awesome God is. Maybe you have another talent or ability. I'm not too sure. Every one of you know you have special things. Maybe one of you is a great artist. Maybe one of you just knows your way around a computer. I'll tell you what, I have Facebook. How many people have Facebook or MySpace? My goodness, that's a lot of you. I have Facebook too. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I added all my friends from, from who I used to know, who I used to go to school with, who I went to college with. And I use that as a way to post videos and explain the gospel, to talk to my friends and family about Jesus, to let them know, to answer their questions. And I don't just go there to update my status and to, you know, talk about all these things that Jeremy's doing. I use, I take everything that God's given to me and I use it for his glory. And when you do that, you're not going to be liked. 
Some of you know that if you take a stand, you won't do the things your friend's doing. Your friend says, ah, come over to my place after school. Let's watch Family Guy. Oh, I see your faces. I see them. I, I know. I used to watch Family Guy. But here's the thing about Family Guy and other things like it is they <coughs> mock God, and you guys know it. You see it. You see them mock Jesus. You see them mock God. You see them mock God's creation. Does that do anything to you? Can that glorify God? Absolutely not. It's not just a pick on Family Guy. You know there's other things. Music you're listening to. Stuff you're doing. Websites you're going on to. That, that are completely against God. Here's a Bible verse for you older people. The, Jesus says that if you even look with lust, that's adultery of the heart. You guys know that's, that's sexual desire. The Bible says that we're supposed to treat our uh, other people like brothers and sisters in the faith. So when we go on the websites we shouldn't and we lust after people, you would never do that to your brother and sister. That would be disgusting. The Bible says that if you hate your brother without cause, you're a murderer at heart. And some of you can't stay your brothers and sisters. They're annoying to you. But does that bother you enough to change? If God says that's murder of the heart, and you just admit it to me by your face that this is me, what are you going to do about that? See, this is, is it's a totally different worldview, a totally different way of looking at the world. No longer do I look at things like, hey, how much sin can I do without falling off the edge and going to hell? How many things do I have to do to be good so I can go to heaven, but still live for me? It's totally different. It's about totally giving your life all to Jesus. Every part of you. He doesn't just get your mouth. Gee, I'm a Christian. He gets your life, your desires, your talents and abilities, your time, your money. Everything becomes Jesus's. And he wants to live his life through you. So you have the decision. Statistically, what this means is what happens to most people. The stats are that about 88% of people who go to youth groups by your freshman year in college, it means when you go through high school and you get your first year in college, you're walking away from Jesus. 88% of you. If these stats are right, some of these are your children and your grandparents. I'm looking at possibly two to three Christians here. The rest who will become atheists. The rest who will be sleeping around with boyfriends and girlfriends and getting drunk in your dorm rooms. You guys know this. And I don't want this to be you. So if you can just hear me, maybe this isn't all making sense right now, but grasp this. And hold tight. Remember this one guy who came to speak to you, who started off crying because he wants you to live for God fully. And not to be a hypocrite, but to live everything for him.